and McDougall has her Pop hands it. on the ball. Gordon checks with both teams. <laughs> and we're underway here at Stonex Stadium, collected by Cantorna. Ball straight in there to McMahon. A big early carry from the Irish Go international back. and Tessier puts boot to ball. And there's Breach tidying that up to McDougall. Fly half sees space, puts boot Stop to here. ball again, and Doidge has to go tracking back, controls it with the foot, bounces, picks it up, and sets off herself. And she's seen a little bit of space. Cleo looks to bring her down and does so there brilliantly. And Maloney. That one, though, hasn't quite clicked, and Cantorna has to tidy it up, does well, but it's met by Galligan. Stop forward. Tessier then again puts boot to ball. A tester for breach early doors, and she can't quite hold it. Two knock on. Knock on from First both sides, and it will be a scrum to Exeter Chiefs playing the territory game early with those kicks, Zoe. Yeah, both both sides are playing that territory game. Obviously, wanting to get into each other's twenty twos and real put the pressure on. Just unfortunate there from Jess to drop that ball, but it was good from the um, the Exeter side to actually just put a high ball up. As, as you can see here, Jess has to come from quite deep to collect that ball, so it was going to be a hard take for her just because she was so deep. But it was it was good from the Exeter side. And a scrum on Rats. Saracens ten for them then. Now, last time Bones. these two sides met at this place, Hope Rogers had a little bit of a torrid time at the R, at the scrum here, up against Kelsey Clifford. Really Clifford on the bench today. Donna Rose back from long-term injury. But whilst the scrums do their, their normal thing of uh, a reset before they go again, Zoe, talk to us about, about Donna. She's, she's such a character. Again, had a really serious injury, but she's come back arguably in, in some of her best form. Yeah, such a character. And really get to, got to know that character... Um, Recently, Bones. over the last nine months, um, we both did our ACLs at the same time. Six. We spent a lot of time together, and it was nice to, to do it together. But as you said, she's come back in extremely good form. She's fitter than ever and playing her best rugby. Let's see what happens here then. Bradley with a little snipe. Cleo meets her. Degudi in there as well, but it's Vivas, the other scrum half, that brings her to ground in the end. And Sari's poppy. Cleo making Leave an now. absolute nuisance of herself there. And Katie Buchanan has to go in. Ride to tackle a page varies, but the goody brings no. her to ground. Second attempt. A penalty Let's for Exeter, the and they'll probably look to put this one into the corner. It's fantastic play uh, by Poppy Kill there, just making herself a massive nuisance. It's it's what she does. It's what she does best, actually, Poppy. It's making herself a nuisance it's around the it's pitch. The white line, please, um, but for us, as a Saris team, it buys us time. It lets us get set in defence, and then, then teams don't really know what to do because their original plan has just gone. She seems in the last few weeks, Poppy Clear as well, to, to really have the bit between her teeth. But let's see what happens with this line-out. It's taken quickly, and McMahon out to Tessier, and Tessier to Buchanan, and there's space here for the Chiefs, and then metres out from the line. And they continue to build, and Tessier goes herself a couple of tries already this season for the Canadian no, International. You've gone to and they move forward twice. She thought she'd had that one there, but no, says the referee, and will come offside. back for the penalty. Offside. And Exeter are really putting the pressure on Saracens here in these opening minutes, and uh, an interesting decision here, but you suspect, as you can see here, Hope Rogers is going to have a go herself. Tackle! Pushed backwards by that Saracens defence. And Chiefs have they managed to get it down. The refs having a look, held up. Superb defence from Saracens. Who's that at the bottom of that? It's Poppy Cleal. Zoe, you talked about her being a menace and, and she's really saved her side there. She's really shown us again what she likes to do. is Just, just annoy Make the other sure team behind. as much as she can. So she goes and holds up a try there, which is excellent. Um, yeah, as you just saw before Exeter, I think it was a double movement. So the try was disallowed, but they went quickly. But you know, Poppy reacted quicker and got herself under that ball. Exeter then will look to respond again. And Bradley has her hands on the ball. Maddie Fianati there, her last game for Chiefs for the moment before she returns to New Zealand. Hessier, that one's charged down. But Exeter recover and there's McMahon. Fianati again on the ball. Evans looking to get herself in there, but Brooke Bradley quickly to it. And Tessier, and there's Nick Friday against Rosie Gallagher. 
Kobayashi looks to spin that one out. Deutsch is a little bit above her head, and Lossie Clapp goes hunting. That gets the crowd involved on that far side. And Bradley again to Rogers. Runs through and over the Saracens defender, and Bradley snipes, goes herself, sees space. Brooke Bradley's going, Bradley's but she's lost gone. the ball at the last minute. Superb tackle, and McDougall now comes away with Bryce it and puts boot to ball herself. And now, suddenly, there's a chase on on that far side. It eventually, though, beats everybody, dribbles into touch. But so you can see Amelia McDougall applauding that there. Brilliant defence all round and, and really good awareness. Yeah, great awareness. And it was great from Amelia just to stick it on her foot there because Exeter and originally in attacks, they were all up and there was no one backfield. Um, unfortunately, I think she got uh, an Exeter player got a uh, touch to it, so it didn't go as far as she probably liked. But it was an excellent decision to put it back there and go chase. Johnson then to Bradley and Cantorna at first receiver and there's Tessie eight and that one doesn't quite Edwards. work and McDonald scrabbling around loses it on the floor and Paige Farries gets her hands on it Edwards. first real time Sarries have had hands on ball so far and they're up to the 10 meter line now and there's Virvas and McKinley Hunt first start in Saracens colors and uh, well against her former club Rather fitting, really. There's May Campbell, always a bundle of energy whenever she plays. And there's Cleo now. Picks it up, looks to go herself. Packer now with her hands on the ball. Saracen's continuing to press, probe, ask questions. They're up to the 22 nearly now. And there's Campbell to Farries. We've seen how deadly she can be with ball in hand, but she's mopped up well there by her international colleague, Tessier. McDougall to Packer. Saracen's continuing to ask questions. There's Georgia Evans with a first carry of the afternoon. Breach feeds it on to Gallagher. Lovely little show and go, and Breach got her hands back on the ball again. Extra defence is holding up well at the moment, though. And there's Hunt with a little tip on to Packer. Backwards for me. Went backwards, says the referee. Could have come off the Chief's arm there, but Kanako Kobayashi has tidied it up. It was a knock on the floor, and it'll be a scrum for Exeter. So we've seen there now two initial surges up the field from both sides, and, and so far, defence is ruling the roost. Yeah, both sides are getting their defence really spread across the field, and it's not allowing uh, the attack to really, really make much of it. I think um, both attacks are going to need, need layers to get uh, past the defence, but... Yeah, there's not there's not much going on in attack so far. The defence is really, as you say, all in the roost. Just a little bit of time off here for a couple of running replayers to a few Chiefs players. And uh, you can see the huddle on the screen there of the, the pack. And Lossie Clapton at Amelia McDougall passing on those instructions on. to her back line as well. Quickly back into it then with a scrum for Exeter. But... Zoe, I suppose you can speak from experience there, coming into a, a team as a, a really young fly half. It's really, really important to have those clear messages and, and boss that back line, if you like, as well. Yeah, clear messages and also the experience around her, as we just said. Lottie Cap on her 150 cap came into her first and was probably speaking to her. I know the girls Boys. will definitely be speaking on that attack, saying what needs to happen next, whether it, we need to look Six. for a kick pass run. Um, but yeah, she's young, the we know black. the girls are getting behind her, we want her to be making decisions as well and back that. And I think we're doing that really well black this season, the girls are working really hard to work together and create different things. As I said in the pre-match, Jess even sometimes standing up and going into that first receiver role, taking charge. It's just getting the girls it's to work harder. This white line black. Well, a scrum penalty there for Exeter. And they clear up towards halfway, working harder, as you said, Zoe. It's uh, been eight and a half minutes already, but it, it feels like it's it's been a real game of, of cat and mouse so far. Both both teams feeling each other out, getting a feel for what's going on. And Sophie de Goody nearly managed to get her hands on that ball, but the Chiefs just come away with it. Clee Maloney, the best line-out operator in the league this season. But she was under pressure there from the Canadian captain. And there's Tessier. Puts boot to ball again, and that's going to be another tester this time for McDougall. She takes that well. White, black, white. And returns in kind. Tessier then. That's bouncing all over the place, and it's tidied up by Bradley to Tessier. Stop, Stop and, and now that kicking for territory begins. Breach 
it steps up and has Stop to clear back. well. Deutsch was on her there. And it's bouncing about, and there's an opportunity here for Jess Breach, and she's picked it up, Jess Breach, and Jess Breach is going through, and she's got the ball away to Poppy Cleal, and Virvas with the ball now, that's got the crowd going, and Ella Virvas is going, has Ella Virvas got the legs? Yes, she does! Out of nothing, Saracens hit the front, and it's that bounce of the rugby ball. It does funny things, but I tell you what, once sari has got their hands on the ball, that was superb. Yeah, that was excellent uh, by Jess Breach there. She noticed that Exhale followed their kick and there was only one person backfield. And as you say, the bounce of the rugby ball can go anywhere. So she was at, she was excellent in following up her kick and getting behind it. And luckily it bounced in her favour. But that was excellent support as well by the whole Surrey team. I mean, Ella Vivas got the ball, but she had loads of options around her. I think she uh, didn't want to pass that one, though. So I <laughs> took it herself and uh, she got the try. And for Ella Vivas, that's her uh, second league try of the season. But you talk about it there, look at this replay. Jess tidies that up, keeps going. And you talked about that in the, the build-up, Zoe, as the goodie adds the extras. It's, it's that ability to keep the ball alive from Jess, which we're seeing so much more this season. Yeah, as I said, she's now becoming a kick, pass and run threat, which <laughs> is so hard for the opposition to defend because you never know what she's going to do. She's got the pace to back all these chips and kicks that she's doing up as well. So it's so good to see, and that is just... That's just an excellent play there by Jess. Really is from Jess Breach, and we can see it there on that replay as well. And Poppy Cleal, fair play with that little pass out the back. Back underway again then, and the Goody this time puts that one, well, I was going to say aerial. She's put that one all the way up into the clouds. It's lucky there's no planes flying over us here. But Exeter do well to tidy that one up. And here's Menin with her first carry of the afternoon. Yes, but it's come back on the Saracen side though, and Evans to clap. And that crowd on the far side getting involved now, but a penalty for the Chiefs holding on. And an instant opportunity for them to get back down into that Saracen's 22, and, and great work from Rachel Johnson on the floor there to win that one for her side. This is what I mean about a Saracen's Exeter game. It's always back and forth, and you never know which way it's gonna go. So we've gone and scored a try. In the next minute they're back in our 22. It's a decent okay, nudge from Tessier there fairly deep into that Saracens 22. She probably would have wanted to get a little bit more on that if she could have. I mentioned it earlier about the set pieces they're going to be huge this game so it's interesting to see what they'll do from this more. And Exeter then interesting to see what they do well they've only got one idea at the moment and that's to keep it in they're going to have to use it now though because saracens have done well and evans is making an absolute mess of that one and she's wrapped up brooke bradley the goodies in there as well marley packer chanting cheering and there you go a scrum for saracens a big win there pats on the back all round poppy cleo making a menace of herself again there but georgia evans you said it beforehand, Zoe, she puts her head where most people wouldn't want to, and she's won her side of scrum. Yeah, she's been excellent there, um, getting through the, the mole and getting onto the ball. As I said, the set piece is going to be key, and we've just really disrupted theirs. Now on to scrum time. Next set piece. Let's talk about this scrum a little bit then. I, I know it's not exactly Crumbs. your area of expertise. I had Donna Rose up with me for a lot of Five. games last season, and... Uh, the amount of scrum chat, I think, would uh, have probably ended up boring even the uh, the biggest rugby nors out there. But it's such an important part of the game and a penalty for Sarri's there. But Number one in first. Zoe, for you as a 10, one, how important is it to get that front football from that pack, especially, like you said, on a day like today where there's so much that could go either way? Yeah, massively important because then it gives you all the options of, uh, of of attack. If you're going backwards, then you're under pressure, and that's what you don't want. If they're going backwards, they're under pressure in defence, and the attack just becomes a little bit more easier, and also just a lot of space, and your eyes just light up. Uh, so I, I don't know what Donna would have been telling you, and I have no idea about scrums, but as long as it's going forward for me, I'm happy. <laughs> Well, Donna Rose would have been happy with that one, winning it for her side. De Goody gets that to Virvas and under pressure from Maloney has to show, go, dart, pull down by Exeter's front row union and McDougall steps in for her side and Poppy Cleal again. We said her name so much in the first 15 Not minutes out. of this one and she's still going there. Virvas back in position to Sophie Bridger with that little chip through and that's clever and that's putting pressure on and again it's bounced up. Bobbles into touch this time. 
but you can see there that threat out wide, that speed from Sydney Gregson, Paige Farries, yeah. really, really testing Katie Buchanan early doors. It was great to see the whole Surrey's back line on the same page, as I said earlier, you know, working with the younger 10, a lot of the back line have to um, step up, make decisions as well, and you can see they're all on the same page and knew what each other were doing, which was really good to see. That one, again, goes high, but comes back on the chief Next side, block. and Tessier has to put boot to ball. And so I can see your point in where the space is. Jess looks up, presses probes, and eventually feeds it to Lossie Clapp, who goes into Kanako Kobayashi. And Kobayashi does well to get out of the way there. There's a bit of a, a risk for her side to Goody. On to Bridger. Nice, quick hands from the Canadian. Vivas clear again to Gregson, to Packer. This is brilliant from Saracens. Georgia Evans thinks there was a deliberate knock on there. The referee agrees. And May Campbell Not goes into her opposite number, win. Maloney. Vivas again. McKinley Hunt down, drives forward. Good carry from the prop. Gregson then with the advantage. Looks to put boot to ball. Picks it up brilliantly. Gets that ball away to Gregson and Farries. Buchanan does brilliantly there to get back and tidy it up. But here we go again for Saracens. McDougal, Hunt. You can hear that cry of Sari, Sari's from that far stand. Evans again to Packer, tidied up brilliantly there by McMahon. That's what she's going to bring to the uh, game today. And she just halts that Sari's attack somewhat. But to Goody again to Bridger through Kobayashi and gets the ball away to De Goody. How she held on to that. But Viervas has seen space and there's Bridger again to Lottie Clapp. Good tackle. Kobayashi can't compete. Chiefs come through again. There's Evans to clear inside ball to De Goody. Saracens edging towards that Exeter line now. Here's May Campbell again. Big carry, big tackle. Hope oh, Rogers, but Campbell keeps going, rides it, goes over and scores. Brilliant awareness from the hooker. A little chuck of the ball up into the air as well. And it's a second try for Saracens. And Zoe, again, it's just brilliant, brilliant work all around the park from the collective team. That was an unbelievable attack from Saris there, the patience. They built on, you know, constant attack and putting pressure on the other side. As you saw earlier, Sydney Gregson put a little ball through, collected it. It's just constantly getting behind them, pressure on pressure. And it was just it was just great to see the handling. They kept everything alive. And the layers that I spoke about earlier, which we didn't have, we then we then bought. So it's just so hard to defend when um, teams are attacking and pulling the ball out the back or just constantly um, coming off each other's shoulders. And May Campbell as well, though. We can see they're riding that initial tackle, powering through Doidge and a little pirouette over the line there from, from May Campbell as well. But brilliant play again from the hooker. De Goody lines that one up. That one doesn't go over. So it's 12 0 to Saracens. But Sorry, Saris have got the best red zone efficiency this season, scored the most tries in the league, and, and we're really seeing it here. May Campbell, the awareness to know she's not been held, gets back out, goes again, and so, so deadly in that 22. Yeah, massively deadly. As I just said, the, the Saris girls are trying to keep the ball alive and make it as hard as possible for the opposition to defend them by always switching up what they're doing. Good clearance kick there from Saracens up towards the halfway line. And that's the sort of exit that they're going to need this afternoon. So we see that crowd there in for this one. I just want to go back to where I picked out Sydney Gregson putting that grubber through. It was just excellent vision because, as I said earlier, Jess was quite deep um, when they threw that high ball up. Exeter are also standing quite deep for those little grubbers. We've seen a few of them now from the Saris girls just getting in there. It's really creating competition behind the front line. Yeah, it's the ground by white, I agree. And there's competition all around this one. And in the breakdown as well as Maloney swivels away from the ball. Bradley there quickly. Poppy Leach with the carry. Marley Packer brings her down. Captain on captain. <laughs> Penalty yeah. though. Not rolling. not rolling away. And a chance for the Chiefs to get themselves back into that Saracens 22. And this is the sort of thing we've seen from Exeter so many times over the last few seasons. Zoe, they, they don't get into their heads when they go a couple of scores down. They, they keep it tight. They keep it consistent. They, they build those opportunities, and they've got another one now with, uh, with Tessier booting that one back into the 22. Yeah, as 
as you say, we know that Exeter can be quite dangerous. So they've got another set piece here. Hopefully it will go Sarri's way again. But they are dangerous. We know what they can bring. So we've just got to match it. See what happens then at this line out. Maloney taken, but pilfered by Gallagher and De Goody comes away with it, wrestled to the ground by Leach. Sophie De Goody has been in every single team of the round so far this season when Saracens have played. You can already see the impact that she is having back in Sarri's colours, but McDonald as well. Similarly, having a big impact for her side, and she does well to get the ball away there to Bradley, who gets it off, and Kobayashi now has the ball. Flings that wide to Katie Buchanan, and Buchanan's got the pace. Keeps backing herself, goes into McDougall, Farries forcing her to the touchline. And Exeter now with a chance to hit back instantly. There's Poppy Leach, absolutely clattered in that tackle. And another Here's penalty advantage for the Chiefs. Hope Rogers comes away with it. Penalty advantage still with the Chiefs. And there's Kobayashi tipping that one onto McMahon. And Bradley again. Fianati goes on her own this time. Pulled down by Hunt. Bradley to Leach to Tessier. Nice play from the Chiefs. And Tessier is going up towards the line. Trying to get over the line as a, a absolute mound of bodies there. And the referee says it has to be used. He's seen the try for the Chiefs. And it's Hope Rogers. it looks like, who's managed to get herself over. Try scoring machine for the Chiefs. I think last week was her 29th in 30 appearances. So that's 30 and 31. An extra hit back. Zoe, that's what you were saying about. They're, they're so clinical as well that you've always, always got to be on your guard. Yeah, dangerous and clinical there. As I said earlier about the Sarri's patience, X did really well to to have their patience there and get that try. So that what is good to see about the Saris girls there is they're jumping two in one tackle, um, which is which is stopping Exeter able to offload. So they are having to think of other things, but they had good layered attack there and people coming round on hard lines, which is which is very good to see from them. Gabby Cantorna then lining this one up for her side. Her and Sophie De Goody, the top two point scorers in the league this season. Cantorna last week was solid off the tee for her side. And this is one to get them back within five. They're back within the score. Can she add the extras? Good nudge from the US Eagle. And it's 12-7 here at Stonex with 22 minutes gone. Zoe, we talked about those first five, six minutes felt like both teams feeling each other out now it feels like both of them know where they can get their wins from this afternoon around the pitch yeah obviously we've had the first quarter now um so the nerves would have settled each team would know how each other are playing um and now it's just seeing if each other can get into what they found out well and let's see what happens here then chiefs come away with the ball brooke bradley Carried back, back to Tessier, carried back, so can't go out. She's going to put the pressure on Breach again here. Breach takes it well, though, under pressure. Carries forward into contact, and Viavas is there quickly. Evans to Rose. Rose hit back hard by Johnson and Rogers. It's Hunt, tips that on to De Goody. De Goody shoves Brooke Bradley off, spins out of Claudia McDonald's tackle and keeps going. Evans again inside to pack a great ball from Evans and Vivas. McDougall has seen the inside space for Lossie Clapp, but she has been clattered by Poppy Leach there. Sarri's continuing to press, though. Sydney Gregson with her hands on the ball. Hope Rogers trying to pull her over to the touchline. Vivas and May Campbell now with her hands on the ball again. Viervas there could have been a knock-on, but she gets away with it. And McDougall gets the ball away to Packer. Sarri's just going through the motion. Zoe, I can see you pointing down at this uh, this near side. What have you seen? Just a bit of offside from the X. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd seen a, a bit of space out there. And Ella Viervas thought she had as well, but uh, she couldn't. Exit to clear, and McDougall tidies up. Goes herself, steps out of the first tackle. has got to be careful of that touchline, Amelia McDougall. I tell you what, the young fly half has done brilliantly there to keep herself in play. Breach at first receiver to Donna Rose. 
a welcoming committee there for Rose. And Veer has to Gallagher, it's gone it's forward, on. says the referee, and Delika Menin is all over it. Gets no the ball gone. away, but a knock on there from the Chiefs as well. It'll be a Saracen scrum, but again, Zoe there, we can see about that extra defence. It's It might have been offside in this corner, referees didn't see it, but suffocating Saracens in yeah, attack. Yeah, it was very suffocating, and as I said, like both teams are getting around the corner extremely well. Um, just for me, we had a bit of loss of momentum there. We just needed someone to step up and maybe even put a high ball in or kick it deep and go chase. Let's turn the pressure back onto Exeter instead of keeping it within ourselves and building the pressure on ourselves then. What I have enjoyed watching though is Sarri's coming at depth. The forwards coming on at depth, it's giving them options whether to, to carry themselves, either give it or play it out the back, which just creates a bit more in attack and then it's harder for X to defend. But for me, their momentum was more in the defence's favour, so we should have got rid of the ball Rouch. and gone and put pressure on them. All Mine. about where to play and, and earning the right to play as well. It's a scrum for Exeter. Three They've uh, got a free kick at the scrum as well now. And they're taking it quickly through Rachel Johnson as she powers through Sophie de Goody. You don't often say that. And there's Nick Friday tipping it on to Tessier. And Tessier to McMahon wrapped up well. And Hope Rogers again with the carry. And she's still going, Hope Rogers. Tessier to Leach, fizzes it wide to Buchanan and here's a chance now for the speedster pulled down well by Farries and a forward pass as well from Leach. We can see the danger there that is posed by Katie Buchanan on this near side here and a Poppy Leach pass drifting forward. Zoe, I know we talk about the scrums a lot. I know it's not exactly your area of expertise, but with time off here, with May Campbell receiving a bit of treatment, this feels like a really important one. Yeah, it does. As I said earlier, the momentum is now in X's favour. So Sarri's really need to back this scrum up and get the momentum back in our favour. And then it gives, as I said earlier, it then give Amelia a chance to, to look up and see where the space is, either play it or kick it into the backfield and go chase. Personally, what I'd do is, because the momentum isn't in Sarri's favour, I'd kick it and get our speedsters to go chase it and put the pressure back on Exeter. But we're just going to take a moment here to, to see see what they're going to do. You can see that they're all over there. Uh, there's a few huddles going on with the back, so they're probably talking about what they can do next. Go on then. If you were out on the pitch right now, Zoe, and you had this scrum in your 22, where would you be looking to take it? Someone. I'd probably be looking to put it into the backfield here because we are just outside the 22 and as I said the momentum is not with us so we want to go put pressure on other people and also with our back three we have a lot of pace. I think we've probably got the quickest back three in the league um, so I'd, I'd love to get them uh, chasing chasing the ball and putting pressure onto uh, Deutsch who's Crouch. in the backfield alone at the moment. Find. Let's see what happens then at this Sit. scrum. <laughs> There's a penalty for Chiefs. Number three, Big win for them. Hope Rogers getting three, the round of applause there. And they'll go back into the corner. And this one feels like it is starting to turn in the Devonians' favour, certainly with how the referee is seeing the scrums at the moment. And Tessier then hooks her side, probably not as far in as she would have wanted, 15 or so metres out. But a big, big moment here for both sides. And uh, Exeter then with a chance to get that driving ball going again. That one just taken That's by great. Rachel Johnson. Penalty advantage again from the referee. They're starting to mount up against Saris now. Don't change. Georgia Evans told to get out of there, and now this starts to go forward from the Chiefs. Maloney with her hands on the ball. Bradley now sees the space to Cantorna. Cantorna goes herself. And they're still spinning it wide, and there's Tessier again weaving through. Tackle! Big pressure moments here for this Saracens defence. And they're still building the Chiefs. They're still going. Rachel Johnson with the latest surge to the line. Leave, leave. 
Marley Packer nearly manages to get a hand on the ball. Evans put pressure on Bradley. But Exeter come again through Deutsch. And they come again through Maloney now. And they're going to be over surely of the Chiefs. Yes, they are. They've leveled it up with a kick to take themselves into the lead. And Clee Maloney Easy. there, really happy with that one. And, and so he, he said the tide was turning. Exeter starting Move to get away. a little bit of dominance up front here. And a little bit of afters Move away. on the floor there, the referee. Asking both teams to go away. Let's have a listen. Well, in the end, the referee lets that one go. Bit of afters, but let's have a look at it. A big shot on Bradley from Georgia Evans. Meryn Deutsch powered up towards the line. And then Bradley to Cantona. Cantona tipped it on to Maloney, and she just managed to, to get herself over in the end there, Zoe. Yeah, she did really well to get on the outside of Poppy Clill there. Um, and I just think the way... Sarries weren't really getting around the corner quick enough there, and they picked it off. Um, Exo were obviously going the same way quite quite quickly as well, and then they realised that Sarries were flooding a bit too too much on that side. So um, so came back, and uh, Cleese is a very good carrier, um, as we saw last week against Ealing. So I think they, they've looked to her there to take the ball over the line. Saris need a big response, you feel, here. Ten minutes or so to go until half-time. And they've been really hot when they've managed to get into the red zone, but they haven't managed to get into the red zone that much in this game, if we're being honest with ourselves here. But they've got the ball back, bouncing all over the place, but McDougall has got her hands on it. And that one has bobbled forward. It's come back to Sydney Gregson and Marley Packer. And Saracens now have the knock-on advantage. Evans to McDougall. Does brilliantly there, Amelia up. McDougall. And she's going through herself. Gets the ball out the back. But it's tidied up by Finati. And that is the end of the advantage for Saracens as well. So Exeter can ride this one out. A couple of Stop balls from the crowd, and Tessier probably doesn't get the distance on that that she would have wanted. It's taken well, and Gregson is in the backfield, but it's Farries and Breach that combine and link up. And Farries still going. Off Sarries me. then building, Off looking to get themselves on. back ahead in this game. They were 12-0 up, don't forget, but the Chiefs have roared back into this one. And De Goody to Farries, that's clever, but Kobayashi stops her well. But De Goody gets herself going again. Sophie De Goody is going. Sophie De Goody, is she going to get another? Yes, she is. Saracens hit the front again. This match has everything. Sophie De Goody seemingly has everything. Seven tries this season. And Zoe, I don't think there's too many players in the world that could have just scored that try. Honestly, when you say this girl has everything, she does. She amazes me every time. She steps on the pitch. I have no idea how she just, like, she just got off the floor out of nowhere and was running with the ball. For me, it's just, they, there's <coughs> this breach again, stepping up as first receiver, giving the ball. But Sophie de Goody's background of basketball is incredible to see on a rugby pitch. She just pick it, picks out players, gives them the ball out of nowhere, and it just really keeps the ball alive. And again, it just puts the defenders in a, like, they don't know what's going to happen when she's got the ball. Like you say, it's that, that basketball ability, keeping the ball alive in one hand as well, but, but keeping the control of it is... It takes a special athlete it's to be able to do that. It's unbelievable to see the control she has and the strength she has to do it when, with, one, with one hand and then hand off people with the other. We saw it against Sale last week. Not quite to that effect as, as she lines up the conversion as well, Sophie de Goody. Oh, clatters off the post. The crowd got excited there. Wry smile from the Canadian. But Zoe, everyone's waxing lyrical about Sophie de Goody at the moment. For you, you're obviously one of the, the best players in the world yourself. You play with a fair amount of them. Where does she stack up for you? World's best player. <laughs> Straight at the top for me. As you said, she, she's got everything. She's got the kicking ability that 
the um, knowledge of the game. She's able to, as, as we just saw there, just put a pass out um, out the back, That's you know. It. It's just it's just mental what she can do. I can't speak highly of her. Just every time she steps on the pitch, as I said, it amazes me. And I'm just so glad she's come back to Zaris and she's on my team because, yeah, that that girl is something special. And so, so humble as well and a, a lovely character to have around the group, I imagine. Yeah, she is a lovely girl. She has it all. <laughs> she has it all. And you stay up. One thing that she doesn't have at the moment, though, is hands on the ball. That one is Exeter's. A knock on from Saracens. And the game with uh, just over five minutes or so to go until till half time feels big. This feels like a big, big moment in this match. Saris have got themselves back ahead, but Exeter has shown they can be lethal from these positions. And either side going in ahead at half time is, is going to be going in with uh, the wind behind their backs. Yeah, for sure, and uh, we've talked about momentum, Crouch. It's, it's gone, it was Sari's way to begin with, then it Fine. was Texas, and now I think it's just come back Sari's way, but we need to see Sit. if they can keep it till half time, because if they can, then it's going to put them in a good position coming out in the second half. That scrum again for Exeter does well, and Johnson gets it away to McDonald, tackled by Clap. ball bounces, bobbles around, but eventually comes back on the Exeter side, some of the Exeter players were, were appealing to the referee there, but... Uh, Penalty advantage coming now from the referee. We'll wait to see if that was for the high tackle. Two. Not releasing. Yes, Harry's needs to be careful here and not give away too many pe penalties, especially when Exeter will Two. not clear it release. start 22 and use this set piece of a driving ball to try and get more tries. We've already seen how lethal they can be, but we've seen them mixing it up a little bit as well with those plays off the back from McMahon, and that's how Maloney went over for that second try. Tessier again, a decent nudge into the 22. Probably would have wanted to get a few more metres on it, but uh, Exeter are back it's in an attacking black. position here and uh, putting Saris under pressure again. Maloney then, with her hands on the ball to Leach, taken set and now they look to drive now they look to go and they're starting to go forward Gallagher is in there crabbing sideways for the Chiefs and Bradley searching for it asking where it is they're going to have to use it Exeter it's not going to go forward any further from there it's Poppy clear on top of it the referee has given the scrum to Saracens that felt big and big moments need big players and it's Poppy clear again yeah again Poppy making herself a nuisance in there, which is really good for us. Um, being able to turn over that ball in our 22 and then just pulling the momentum back so it's in our, on our side just before half-time is great. Hopefully, with this, with this scrum, we'll be able to keep the momentum and get, get rid of the ball and put pressure on to Exeter. Poppy Cleal there, you can see that turnover on screen all over that one, refusing to move. No, she doesn't need to move. Crouch! Fine! But let's see what happens at the scrum. It's been going Exeter's way so far Sit. in this first half. And the referee having a good close look and Poppy Cleo has to pick and go quickly and she does. And Exeter are all over her like a rash but she's done well there. Has Poppy Cleo and Virvas just wants Use. her forwards in there. Susie Appleby screaming next to us. The box kick's coming. But it doesn't come quite yet. McKinley Hunt with the carry. And Packer wriggles her way out of that one. And Virvas still wants it to be set. Some afters on the floor yes. there as well. And, and Poppy Cleal is taking a moment for herself there. That one from Saris, though, has missed touch. And Doidge breaks back comes back into that 22 and Exeter finishing this half on the attack. Hope Rogers again, good carry, good tackle. Bradley Leach takes it on herself, Hunt takes it to ground. Bradley Friday, Fianati. 
Tessier. Maloney again seeing the space. Big, big tackle coming in on the Irish International. And Tessier thinks she's seen space. Chips in behind Alexander Tessier. Who's going to win this race? The ball in the end is the one that does it. Sophie de Goody putting her arm around her there. Clever play from Tessier and it very nearly came off. Yeah, that was a fantastic hit by Donna there. It was dominant. If, you, if your team has a dominant hit against you, you then go backwards. And then and it's, what can you do next? If you're on the, the back foot, the it's right, harder to attack. So then Tessier saw that the back foot was empty and put it into Make the sure back. Unfortunately for her, the kick was a little bit too long. Um, that's probably because she was under pressure after Donna's big hit. But this is now uh, going Sari's way. That one goes up into the air, is taken by Deutsch. Big hand off on Vivas, but the scrum half stays in the fight. May Campbell eventually joins up. <laughs> Penalty for Saracens, and it's Marley Packer. And she's tapped and gone, but the referee says she's taken it from in front of the mark. Sophie de Goody there, you can see, knew that that was on. But Marley Packer there coming to the fore as well for her side. She talked to us pre-match, said she loves these sorts of games, loves these moments, loves these occasions, and she's come up with another big one there. She also loves a turnover, clearly. <laughs> oh, she really does. Marley Packer. England captain, 99 caps for her side, for her country, I should say. In the 80s for Saracens, 82. And the top scorer in the league this season, eight tries. She just seems like one of those players that's, that's getting better and better with age as well. If, uh, if you can say that she's always been world class. But like a fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me, Zoe. But, but you're right. She really seems to have taken her game to another level and is adding so many more extra facets to it as she goes through the years. She's going to be one of those that can't retire. No one's going to let her. <laughs> she really is. Marley Packer still going strong, still playing at the peak of her powers. World Player of the Year. On. And there's another player who will be thrilled with that one. May Campbell clearly loves a turnover as well. Big, big turnover for Saracens with the half-time clock about to ring. And this one is going to get booted into touch, I imagine, by McDougall. Yeah, I agree. It'll be half-time. It'll be a uh, huge stoppage. Well, it's not May touch, but Susie Appleby wants this one just to wait, go off wait. the pitch for half-time. Let's see what Saracens do. Are they going to play it or are they going to... Just Stop kick it back. off, Vivas, but it's drifted straight out. And a, a slightly messy end to the first half, but what a first half it has been, Zoe. It's Saracen 17, Exeter Chiefs 14. Yeah. Well, perfect timing. Back with us on the referee's whistle as Alex Tessier gets us back underway That's here. Right. And Amelia McDougall hoofs that one long. Doidge to Fianati. Brilliant break there by the back row. Her last game for the Chiefs at the moment, as we said. And there's Hope Rogers now with the ball in her hands. And Chief now suddenly under pressure here. Tackle! Big tackle coming in from Sydney Gregson. And there's Hope Rogers now with the carry into Donna Rose, through Donna Rose, but Rose stays in that battle and Bradley has to put boot to ball. And that's a clever kick and it's bouncing all over the place and it's uh, still bouncing, still going and uh, eventually on. it's come back on the exit to side. Play on, says the referee and Cantorna to Rogers again. And Rachel Johnson now. Release! Hit 
bounces and bobbles and Katie Buchanan has to tidy that one up there's pressure coming on her but she breaks free does Katie Buchanan and now she's going and now she's accelerating and she feeds Brooke Bradley and it's Brad or Claudia McDonald I should say and McDonald is going to fly over for the Chiefs at the start of this second half take them back into the lead and Zoe I can see a grimace on your face as they went through there it's what happens when you kick into that dangerous part of the field and especially when you've got a back three like that coming back at you yeah as you said earlier they've got a very talented back three and Katie Buchanan just spotted the space and she's a little speed so she just take, she just saw out, the yeah. space yeah. Yeah. flew <laughs> through it and then Claudia McDonald yeah. also very yeah. quick just got on yeah. off the back of her very well to to finish that try I think Sarri's just left themselves a little bit open there in defense uh, they didn't quite come up as a line as you see Ella shoots there and then Buchanan just gets in the back of uh, May Campbell and in between her and Georgia Evans and it just made it easy. Um, Jess Breach came across to make that tackle not knowing probably that Claudia McDonald was there on the outside. So, um, so yeah, they really took that opportunity. Cantona then looking to keep her 100% success rate off the tee for this one. Her side are back into the lead. Can they extend it? Yes, they can. It's 21-7 team to Exeter now and uh, a big start was needed but a bit of a sucker punch and uh, we just get another angle of this here Casey Buchanan a proper little speedster zips out of that first tackle and uh, races away bursts away and then that presence of mind to find her other winger McDonald and Sarries need a response here now and they need one quickly well, that's a good start. Packer tidies up, mops up. Hope Rogers. Carry back. Wait, White. And McDougal has seen some space. But Exeter have their hands back on the ball. And they put boot to ball now, tidied up by Jess Breach, and she chips in behind a clever, delicate little kick by the fullback, and that bobbles into touch. That's the sort of thing that Saracens needed to get themselves back into this one. It's going to be a line out for the Chiefs, but it puts Saris in the right area of the park to, to try and make a bit of an impact here, Zoe. Yeah, great awareness from Jess. Obviously, the kicker chased that, leaving one person in the backfield left, left a massive hole for her to put the ball into. I think she was aiming for a bit of a 50-22 there. Unfortunately, she didn't manage to get it, but she's got Saris in a very good place to go put some pressure on Exeter now. That's worked well by the Chiefs. And they look to set the ball. And Brooke Bradley looks white. around, takes it to Fianati and white, uh, white. hoofed down the field in the end by Tessier. And McDougall tidies that one up. Stop here, stop here, stop here. Puts boot to ball herself. And the ball bouncing again. And Doidge under white, pressure white. there from Cleo gets it away. And there's Viervas now with the ball. Retreat black out of the again team. goes Ariel white. looking to bring everybody on. And there's Doidge tracking, tidying up well. And a big shot there coming in. Donna Rose again with that tackle and there's McKinley Hunt with another big big hit front row union doing the job there but Exeter are growing into this game building into this game but that from De Goody is brilliant and she's looked to create a mall tackle release but Exeter do well and Leach tidies up and a chant of Sari Sari to try and get them back into this one and that ball bouncing all over the place and Rogers to McDonald and she wiggles three of the first tackle, gets the ball away and Hunt now. And Johnson's still going. Sarri's putting the pressure on here against the Chiefs. And Marley Packer's got her hands on the ball and knock on on the floor from Exeter as well. And that's what Sarri's needed and they found it through their co-captain. Yeah, great defensive pressure there from Sarri's. Exeter just got quite flat when they were taking the ball from their forwards, which was putting pressure on themselves anyway. But Sarri's did great to shoot out the line um, and get them to knock that ball on. Obviously, it was May Campbell. She's a little terrier, isn't she? She's always <laughs> flying off the line somewhere. Um, but yeah, great pressure know, from her to make them knock it on. Scrum here then for... Saracens it wasn't quite going their way in the first half 
Crouch. Let's see what happens at one. this one. Viras with the ball Six. in the hands. And it's a better scrum, but it's flown out the back, and Cleo does well to get that away, and Bridger does well to take that above her head and get it away brilliantly to Sydney Gregson. And Sydney Gregson suddenly is bursting through, bursting through, looks to free the hands to Viervas, running on at pace, gets herself to ground, and this is better from Saracens. This is what they needed. And Gallagher to Breach to Campbell now, still going, May Campbell. And Viervas again, McDougall, Bridger. Building, building, Farries, is she going to get there? Paige Farries, referee's having a look, and he's given it. Saracens hit the front again, and it's Paige Farries, her first appearance for the club at Stonex, her first try for Saracens at Stonex, her seventh for the season. And this game, Zoe, it's ebbing and flowing. That was fantastic set piece from the Saris girls there. Sophie Bridger taking it straight to the line, making two people jump on her, getting her hands free, pulling it back to Sydney Gregson. Sydney Gregson, such an aggressive runner, and she's so fast as well. And just, I love this last bit of play here. Ball out, the quick ball, get it out the back, free the speedsters up, and then they do what they do best. They finish and score the tries. Paige Ferris on fire this season. I love that we, 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 uh, we got first dibs on her to come to Saris because she's been incredible for us this season. She really has, and I think everyone everyone talks about a unique personality <laughs> with Paige Farries, a, a real bubbly character in and around the group as well. Yeah, not only is she great on the pitch, but she's, she, as you say, such a character off it, and I think she honestly just brings the team, team up. If you turn up to training, you're a little bit low or a little bit tired or something, as soon as you hear her voice, your mood just jumps up. So that conversion then drifts wide from the goodie. But look at this. Jess Breach did well, but Bridger fed that ball to Gregson. And Sydney Gregson was away. Like you said, Zoe, such a powerful, aggressive carrier of the ball. But in all the ways you'd want it. And Saracens, well, they've got the try bonus point. But they are one point ahead. So far, De Goody won from four off of the tee. Cantorna three from three off of the tee. Could that prove critical? in the final shake-up. For now, it's Saracens 22, X to 21. Use. And Viervas with the ball in her hands. Outside. And she clears that one down the field to Deutsch. Tidied up by Clapp. But Deutsch rides the tackle, comes through. And it's Exeter's turn now to come again. Kobayashi, Kobayashi goes herself, Japanese international, back for her second spell at the Chiefs. Pulled down eventually. Rosie Gallagher in there, and there's Nick Friday, carries hard herself. And Bradley, Tessier, Johnson. Poppy Cleal nearly manages to get her hands on that one. Hope Rogers carries hard. Sydney Gregson with the tackle again. Exeter's coaches behind us shouting offside, but the Saracens' defence managed to stand their ground. And they come again, this time through Menin. She's wrapped up well, does well to release the ball and get back to her feet. And Tessier to Kobayashi, she's hit hard, she's pushed back by Jess Breach. Friday tips it on to Johnson, met with a double tackle. Exeter coming again, but that one bounces, bobbles, and now Cantona has to tidy up. And she is wrapped up by McKinley Hunt. And Tessier forced to go. Aerial Viervas under pressure here. Does she call the mark? Yes, she does. Good awareness there from the scrum half. What was great there from the Saris defence, there was two dominant tackles. So Exeter were constantly marching backwards there. Great from Tessier to stick it to the... Uh, up in the sky but unfortunately she went a bit too long making Vivas stick it up for the mark so Saris are now pressuring them again at the halfway line Exeter then have the ball back in their hands but May Campbell has now come away with it and is there an opportunity here Farries breach puts boot to ball it's what we were talking about before the match and Deutsch has to tidy it up, but she's now under pressure by Paige Farries. Release two! And that's better from Saracens. That's the sort of play that they're going to need in this second period. 
He's got the crowd Stop going as well. Just under a thousand in here today at Stonex. And Zoe, you're pointing at where the space is. Marley Packer knows one way though, and that's forward, and off she goes. Tidied up well by Friday. Clee Maloney yeah. there. The referee says the ball was out. But Virvas then gets it. her hands back on it, on it and turns the ball one back over left. for her side. Crucial intervention from the scrum half and Bridger now with the ball. Shirt hauled off her bat by Hope Rogers and a penalty in at the side from Exeter Chiefs and Saracens now have a chance to go into the 22. Zoe, you talked about big moments and you talked about building the pressure, building the momentum. That was superb. That was that was fantastic. So we stole um we stole the ball at the ruck and and what needed to happen was someone to put their boot to ball. We shipped it out wide and then just made the defence come up on her and then she put it in behind them. Um, and it was great press then from the Saris back three uh, going hunting for the ball to try and get it back, which means Exeter were constantly under pressure there. So this is a part of the field. We've not seen Saris in many times today, an opportunity to get the drive in more working. We've seen how deadly it can be this season for them. First of all, it's got a click and it does at the front to Gallagher. And Packer has her hands on the ball and Campbell with her now looking to get this one working. Exeter though, defending this one resolutely, Going defending this one, one absolutely phenomenally in fact. And Lottie Crap Clap gets herself in there and Virvas has to dart away, go herself, but it still might work out. Sophie Bridger brought to ground by Tessier and May Campbell picks, goes, scragged to the ground by Maloney. Virvas. Saracen building again and Poppy Cleal's having to fight for the ball there because extra are all over her but she's done really well to get it back to her side and Donna Rose with the carry now there's Virvas and De Goody again going working through Tackle! three extra players eventually managed to get her to ground and a penalty advantage coming again for the hosts here and Virvas looks the other way there's Campbell Big carry from Campbell. The ball's at the back for Virvas. And here we go. McDougall's seen the space out wide. Is it going to work out for Lossie Clap? Not quite. But the referee says the ball knock is still live no until it isn't. A knock on there, but we'll come back for a penalty for Saracens. Yeah, very unfortunate knock on there, but that was the right decision. Lottie Clapp Two, was in space for release. quite a while there, calling for that ball. So excellent to put it on the foot there by Amelia and um, have a bit of a competition there. Obviously, Lottie's on the wing against um, Brooke, who uh, unfortunately is a, a little bit smaller than Lottie, so um, it would have been a good challenge. Nearly, but Saracens then, we wondered if they were going to go to the corner. There's a, a conversation it's here about what they're going to do with the penalty. They're seven metres out from the line, and it looks like they're going to tap this one. Let's go for it, too. And here we go then, Campbell to Cleo to Donna Rose. We saw that move last season a number of times from Saris. <laughs> And they've got oh. another penalty there. McMahon penalised. They're four metres out now. Check the roll. Exeter are going to have please. to be careful with the penalties this close to the line because soon the referee might call for a yellow card. And obviously the momentum is in Sarri's, in Sarri's way at the moment. So they just need to be very careful. They do need to be really careful here. Exeter don't want to fall foul of the referee. And here we go from Saracens. That's surely over from Poppy Cleal. The referee, though, has given a penalty for holding a double on. movement. And then holding on really, really low carry there from Cleal. And she thought she was over. Let's have a look here. She carried, didn't think she was held, and got it onto the line. I don't think she was held. Um for that tackle so I can see why she's done that and we've done it a few times uh, in, in the first half so I can see why she went to it but unfortunately it was it was called against her that time and that one from Exeter finds touch near their own 22 so the pressure's still on them but Saracens will know that could be an opportunity that has slipped away from them it was such a good carry from Cleal and she thought she was there but Exeter to come away with the penalty time off for the moment though with an Exeter player down with a, a fair amount of blood Round the nose. That's Adele McMahon, it looks like. Yeah, not, not your fault. And the referee just going over whilst that's yeah. being uh, patched up for the Exeter player. Yeah, it doesn't help at all, does it? I did speak about earlier um, coming out 
in the second half and who's who's going to put the pressure on who first. And as we saw, Exeter did come away with that try, but it just seems it's gone back into Sarri's favour, um, which is, is working well for them. We're, we're now in front again, but um, it's just how long can we um, keep them down in their 22 and put the pressure on so we can hopefully get another try. Um, hopefully this will this will go our way, um, but we'll have to see Someone. after the, after the uh, nosebleed. Time off at the moment then, and we can have a look there very briefly at Susie Appleby and Steve Salvin, the Exeter coaching yeah, ticket. Yeah, Before we get back underway, one more look at that one. Cleo thought she was fine to go. But Exeter then under pressure. Poppy Leach really has to fight for the ball there, and it's scrappy, scrappy play. But Exeter have got their hands on the ball. They're chasing this game now, but it is a solitary point, and Hope Rogers continues to go forward how many minutes can hope rogers put in this afternoon it's a penalty again for exeter offside on the far side and it's just a soft exit for the chiefs that, that saris really didn't need to give them zoe yeah unfortunately ella vivas may have started her takeoff there a little bit early just to go put uh, the kicker under pressure it was the right idea but unfortunately she took off a bit too early Let's just have a quick look at this then with uh, Saris readying themselves here to make a replacement. You can see here Virvas and Evans there, the referee holding them and Virvas just sets off early. The referee pulls that one instantly and a change for Saracens as well. Donna Rose's work is done and Kelsey Clifford comes on in her place. Really good shift again there from uh, from Donna this afternoon, Zoe. Yeah, she's put some great tackles in. We've seen this season. She's she's a big hitter. Um, it seems like that ACL has not given her any trouble lately. Um, and it's great to see her back in fine form and hitting like she is. Oh, and we're away again. And the speed to Jess Breach. Has Jess Breach is going. Is Jess Breach going to get a breakaway for Saracen? She is in the corner. Stops herself on the advertising boards at the end party in the USA plays around Stonex and Zoe you saw that before anyone else Jess Breach electric bursting away out of nothing and Saris goes six points ahead with the conversion to come yeah she's so fast she couldn't even keep up on comms there really couldn't keep up on comms let's have a look at uh, what happened here thank you for uh, for digging me out of uh, a hole there Zoe really appreciate it it's uh, a big looping pass Meryn Deutsch can't control it and it's Gregson to Packer and Jess Breach picks the ball up and from there 40 meters out you're not going to stop her when she puts the foot to the pedal. Yeah Saris were excellent there in, the, in defense they came up flying as a line and once you fly up um, on the inside it allows the outside to go and Paige just caught her um, while the ball was in air time which made a um, Deutsch knock it on uh, turnover for into the Saris hands and you just set Jess Breach in a little bit of space and she can do a lot so as you saw there she just sped down the wing and scored as she normally does Jess Breach electric for Saracen Sophie de Goody this is a, a really big conversion if she's able to slot this one admittedly right from the touchline then her side's lead will go above the seven points it hits the posts again so so close and Exeter now making three changes as well it's a uh, Harriet Miller Mills, Ebony Jeffries, and Maisie Allen coming on, and uh, Nicola Friday, Maddie Fianati, and uh, Adele McMahon. Their day is done. Jess Breach there, Claudia McDonald decided no point competing there. Jess Breach was scoring that try regardless. And it's a six point game here at Stonex. It's been ebbing, it's been flowing. And there's a good touch finder there from Virvas up towards the 10 meter line. It's black. So Maisie Allen's on the pitch now. We talked a little about, bit about her in the build-up. Uh, a player in a, a similar mould to Marley Packer, but uh, but very different as well. A big 20 minutes needed from her now for her side. Yeah, massive one. Um, as you said earlier about her match-up with um, Packer, she's coming through the ranks at England. Um, as you said, Marley Packer, 99 um, appearances for England. Maisie's only had a couple. Um, but it's, it's great for her to be able to look up to someone like... Um, to look up to someone like Marley and follow in her footsteps. Obviously, she does a lot like her already, and it will be, it's great for her to be coming up mentored by Marley. So when Marley leaves, that we'll have 
someone that can take her spot. Let's have a look here then. That was a big intervention from Sydney Gregson, winning the penalty for her side. And Amelia McDougall, that was right on yeah. the edge there, but a, a really it's, good touch finder yours, from the 18-year-old. It's uh, scary to think yours, Amelia McDougall's still 18 years of age. But uh, now Exeter need to be on their defensive set again. And Exeter know now these are crucial moments. Saracen's lining up another sub below us, but uh, let's see what happens here. Packer to Gregson, and Gregson goes again. Penalty again for Saracens in the 22. Zoe, I hate to ask you this because I think that uh, the call will be to go to the corner with the referee having a word first. Let's, let's listen to what he says quickly. Three penalties in very short succession that break down. Okay. You might leave me no choice. Discipline, please. So the referee there just saying to Poppy Leach, your players have a choice. Come on. Zoe, they're going to go for touch here. Would you potentially consider going for the posts? Do you know what? Yes, I would have, but also... Line. Line is yours, White. We know what Sari's Mormon is like. We know what that can do and the danger, danger that can bring. Um, and I think the girls might want to get a couple more points ahead. Let's see what happens then. It's taken by Cleal in the air. Packer has her hands on it. It's going forward. May Campbell now in position. Exeter defending this well. And now Gallagher is there with it. Chiefs have defended that so, so well so far. The and it looks like they're going to get the turnover out of this. The referee's once. having a look. That's once he said, use it, coming soon. And it comes back Easy. Exeter's way. A, a big, big moment in the game. And uh, the Chiefs survive, Zoe. Yeah, um, as I said, a pro and you said, you know, maybe looking at the post, uh, oh, just keep black. the scoreboard black ticking um, while the time's going on. You're down in the 22. We've been there a few times, and sometimes we haven't actually come out with points. So this time, do we start looking at getting time's the points, off. especially um, as it's it's still a tight game? I also just want to pick up on on speaking about Maisie Allen and mm -hmm. Amelia McDougall, the youngsters. It's really nice to see them playing in this league and getting a lot of experience because. You know, all of us grow old sometimes. <laughs> all of us grow old. And uh, there's newer, younger girls that are going to need to come through the pathway. And them being able to play in this league, getting that experience, um, it's on. fantastic because they're playing in Someone. a league with all other internationals from Canada, America, all over the world. It then sets them up to be able to perform on an international stage. Georgia Evans there making her way off the field. Her work is done on her 50th appearance for the club. Emma Taylor coming on in her place. And Chiefs know they'll still be under pressure here at this front. Both Fine. front rows have only seen one change so far, and that's Kelsey Clifford entering Six. the fray. Let's see what happens. Chiefs, though, have got a new second row, a new six, a new seven, but they've still got the same eight, and that's Rachel Johnson, and away she goes. Powers through McDougall. Leach to Miller Mills. First time we've said her name on the pitch this afternoon. And that one from Tessier booms high, bounces all over the place, and it's a competition Advantage all over the place on. there. Knock on from Chief, says the referee. And a knock on from pretty much everybody, but we're still playing on. De Goody hands off, has a look, shows, goes, carries through Tessier. And now Saris have the advantage ball over. again, advantage over. And Lossie Clapp has seen a gap. Lossie Gap Clapp on 150 of his burst in the way. Lossie Clapp, has she got the legs? Held up. Has she got it down, though? The referee short. says short. It's recycled so close. And now ball is out, ball is out says the referee. And ball Exeter have got their hands on it. But it's come back again. Just Breach has pilfered it back. Release These twice. are big, big moments for both teams here. Exeter have to defend for their lives. Penalty advantage coming. Saracens need to protect this ball. Have they got it down? Held up, Held up is the call, but we'll come back for the penalty. And it is a yellow card for the Chiefs. It's Clee Maloney making away off the pitch. And uh, Zoe, as we see that replay of that lossy clap break, 
you called it, it had been coming, the referee had warned them. Yeah, as I said earlier, they need to be careful. They're getting way too many penalties uh, away by the try line, and it's just going to lead to something like that. Time on. But also, that break from Lottie Penalty Clapp is great. She's come off her wing, she's spotted the gap, she's fed it into Ella, and she's gone through a massive hole. It's just unfortunate on her 150th and her birthday that she couldn't get it down, but we've still got a few more minutes left in the game to uh, so hopefully line is she yours, White. get that try. Five metres out then, Saracens. Let's see what happens here. First part is it needs to go to hand. It does. And now they set them all. Hope Rogers trying to make a nuisance of herself. Ebony Jeffries in there as well. To ground by Black. To ground by Black, says the referee. And it's going to go back on Exeter's side again, you know. They've done brilliantly for the second time. Back to ground. Unplayable. In about a couple of minutes to, to hold Sari's back there and as Menin helps clear up, these feel like these could be big, big moments. It's still only a six-point game. Yeah, they are massive moments. And also, going back to what you said about probably going for the Time post, off. it's Sub. now looking more likely Nine for both black. teams because both teams have gone to that drive more a fair few times and I'm not sure either of them have actually scored a try off it. So now I think when either team gets into the 22, I think that needs to be their first thought and not going straight um, to the line out and thinking of a driving mall uh, because both teams need to start putting some more points on. And a change then for Saracens. It's Leanne Infante coming on for Elevir Vass and uh, well it's going to be a scrum to Exeter so they need to bring Emily Totosi on to the pitch to replacement hooker with uh, Clee Maloney off for 10 minutes. And they are sacrificing Katie Buchanan this one. So there is going to be space out there for the Chiefs to have to defend. And Saris know if they can get their hands on the ball that there is going to be those opportunities. Yeah, well, Saris have been great at looking at the backfield space all game. This just makes it even bigger for them because sometimes Exeter have left one person in the backfield from their back three. And if one's now gone um, off on a yellow card, well, a substitute yellow card, then... It's going to be even bigger back there. Crouch! So Charis could keep their head up and keep looking and scanning. Fine. And it could lead to a lot of danger for Exeter. Sit! It is Exeter's ball, though, at the scrum. Let's not forget that. But Sarri's getting the drive on Exeter, having to fight for it. And the referee's the happy heads. for it to continue. And eventually, the Chiefs just, just managed to hold on to it. Tosi there straight into the thick of the action with that carry. And Exeter, there's not much space there for Tessier, and she might not have found masses of meters, but in the context of where she picked that ball up, that is a really, really good effort from the Exeter fly half there. Three white sub. Another change coming up then. Delika Menin's day is done. Lizzie Hanlon making her way on to the field. One of those Exeter University graduates that is uh, is starting to come through into this uh, this chief side now last time she was here in fact was uh, an extra university uh, shirt in april for the uh, the bucks national finals didn't go her day her way that day but uh, all to play for here and a penalty advantage for saracens as they look to maul infante driving her players in there demanding that they go in there and uh, it's broken up, but it's still there, and De Goody has been absolutely clattered off the ball there. And she's clutching her nose, her hand. Could be a bit of a concern for the fly half. It doesn't quite click for Saracens there from McDougall. And we'll come back for the penalty, but uh, there's going to be time off here, and there's a fair bit of concern here about Sophie De Goody, Zoe. Yeah, we don't want to see our golden girl going down like that, do we? Um... I think hopefully she's just been hit on the nose and she, she'll be fine. But um, this is uh, a good fine, a good time for Saracens to reset. Um, obviously that air. didn't go go the their way um, there at the end of that Ten play. But um, hopefully this can be a little reset. They'll probably look to go to the corner. I think depending on where the penalty is, I think it is quite uh, far out, so they might look to go to the corner. If not, I think they should be looking to go to the post. As we said, we've had both teams have had quite a fair few shots at going to that driving more and it hasn't really worked so I think we now need to look at taking some time out of the game but also looking to put points on. Let's see what happens here then there's still some concern for Sophie De Goody 
And the referee had a chat there with, uh, with Marley Packer. There were two penalty options and uh, the one that they have opted to go for, Chiefs, in defence. And uh, Sarri's got a couple of players down there, actually, but they've said they'll have the one for contact in the air, which I suspect was uh, the one that was nearer the, uh, the touchline to go for the corner again, like you said, Zoe. Time on. Time on, then, says the referee. Contact Paige Farry, air. Sophie DeGoody patched up. She's back in and, uh, well, doesn't look in... Uh, completely fine Nick Sophie de Goody but she's uh, going to stay out there and Sari's now five metres out they've had a couple of these opportunities they haven't landed you feel like this could be a sucker punch if they are able to for what for Sari's for Chiefs if they stop it you feel like this could be massive Saracens though with the drive Exeter again with the hold there's so much space on that far side for saracens if they want to use it but they're happy to rumble up to the line and they're over it's a sixth try and no surprises for who that one was zoe <laughs> of course um it was that was great <laughs> We finally got the driving ball working really well there. But as you said, there was a lot of space. Paige probably had 15 metres of space, 20 metres of space, all on our own. So just keep on looking up at that. As I said, the, wing, the winger has gone off as a substitute yellow card. So the, the spaces are um, across, the, well, um, on the edge and in the backfield for them. But we've done really well here. And... Of course, as we can see, no. the Sarri's driving ball going over. It's going to be Marley Packer. It is going to be Marley Packer. Again. Nine tries for the season already for Marley Packer this season. And, uh, well, Zoe, you said ageing like a fine wine earlier in the stream, but uh, leading from the front and, uh, yeah, getting better and better every single time she seems to take to the field. The goody lines this one up doesn't convert it so it's an 11 point game now Saracens are ahead and they've made a change of their own Amelia McDougall is off Beth Blacklock is on and she'll try and steer the ship for her side for these last 10 pivotal minutes yeah Amelia has been great today um, as I mentioned earlier she's only 18 and to compete in one of these games is, is quite a big deal and she's she's held her ground really well um, Obviously, she hasn't got experience on her side, but she's played like she has. Really, really good performance again yes. from Amelia McDougall and uh, learning from one of the best in Zoe Harrison in training as well. Big moment still to go there. Miller Mills, that distinctive running style, gets away, but Lottie Clapp manages to hold her. Exeter know they're playing with a player down for another three and a half minutes or so, but they, they need a big response and they need it quickly. Saracens have scored six tries. They've only converted one of them. So Exeter know two scores, just one of them needs to be converted and they will edge themselves back ahead. There's a lot of rugby still to be played and Hope Rogers is still out there for her side. Totosi tackled by her international captain, De Goody. Tessier, Kobayashi, backwards. backwards, not quite connecting, not quite linking. But Exeter still have the ball, but it's come back now for Saracens and Infante to Taylor. And Taylor can't hold on to it. It's going to be an Exeter scrum. And there was an opportunity there if the Canadian second row had managed to get her hands free on that one, Zoe. Yeah, I saw Leanne lined up to kick that then, and she thought not. You know, the opportunity was we had more people stacked up at wide, so we were going to play that, but black. unfortunately it didn't go to hands. 11 and 8 black. I think a, a few of the girls thought um, she might have kicked that, but she saw the other option, so they were ready to go chase. A couple more changes coming up here then. McKinley Hunt off for Akina Gondwe. May Campbell off for Bryony Field, Poppy Cleal off for Grace Moore, and Corinne Grant on for Lottie Clapp. Her 150th is done so close to that try, but uh, Lottie has put a really good showing in today, and uh, she'll be proud of that, Zoe. Yeah, she will be. Um, every game, you know, she turns up, she does what she needs to do. She actually does the dog work that... It's kind of the unseen work. Uh, she's one of those players that, Crouch. as I said, does the stuff that 
not a lot of people really do. She'll clean up a lot. Um, and just one of those... She Sit. turns up every week playing really well, aggressive in the contact, aggressive in her running, um, and just pitches up everywhere. I'll tell you who has been aggressive there. That's Saracen's front row, newly Rice onto Black, the field. Rice and Black. Rachel Johnson desperately, desperately struggling to hold on to that one. In the end, that was a brilliant scrum, a brilliant surge from the Saris Pat, but Chiefs still have the ball, and that one's been kicked through. Backwards. Breach, it's gone backwards, says the referee. And that's tidied up by Paige Farries, and Paige Farries bursts away into Hope Rogers. Rogers Backle. looking to strip, but the Canadian gets the floor, and there's Infante. Breach at first receiver. Gregson tidies it up, and Corinne Grant looks to stretch her legs, but more importantly, stay in play, and she can't quite do it. Gabby Cantona there for the Chiefs. And with seven minutes to go in this game, they've got a prime attacking opportunity with just under a minute left on that yellow car period. Yeah, it was a nice idea from Saris to try to play it out of their 22 because there was a little bit of space. But at this point, I do think just relieve the pressure. You're in your 22, your points up. You don't want Exeter to come any um, closer um, and get the ball and get some points. So let's just relieve the pressure and kick it down there. That one didn't quite connect for the Chiefs, but it was tidied up Ball's at the available. back by Brooke Bradley. Their scrum half is stuck in there, so Lizzie Hanlon has to go hunting for it. Gets it out to Miller Mills, and Miller Mills gets it on to Johnson. She's met by Moore and Gallagher and Leach. How often, when you watch Exeter Chiefs, do you see Poppy Leach pop up at scrum half for her side? Maisie Allen with an industrious carry. You say that pretty much every week. You watch Exeter as well. And then there's Leach again. Bradley. Jeffries, big, big carry. Emma Taylor does well to get her to ground there. And Tessier steps, weaves, hauled down by Gondwe and Clifford. No, and Saris, well Marley Packer thought about it, told to leave it by the referee. And Lizzie Hanlon puts her head down, drives into contact, up towards that 22. And Jeffries again. Big tackle from Grace Moore. This feels like this could be the game here. Exeter score, it's alive. Saracens hold them out. They would like to hope that they would be able to seal it and see it through. But big, big moments here. Exeter as well, hunting a fourth try for that try bonus point. There's Tessier intercepted by Leanne Fante, though. And Leanne Fante has got a clear run to the line. She's being tracked back by Claudia McDonald. Is she going to beat her or is Infante going to get another try? Infante for the win. That is surely the match. The five points top of the table for Saracens. And Leanne Infante, like all good scrum halves, hiding on the edge, popping up at the crucial moment. And surely, surely taking this match out of Exeter's reach, Zoe. That was great work there. From Leanne, she's realised that we were up in defence, that it was her time that she was able to shoot out the line, and she read it superbly. Um, her experience just allows her to know what's going to happen next, and there she is. She's thrown herself into the extra attacking line to steal the ball off her, and then run into the line. I'm not sure she would have actually enjoyed that 80 metre <laughs> sprint, to be honest, but um, she'll enjoy the try, that's for sure. <laughs> She's making a little bit of a, a habit of this, Leanne Infante. A 50-metre show, go and burst against Loughborough Lightning in the Cup. Uh, a similar burst against Sale Sharks last week. And as Sophie de Goody converts this one, that's her furthest of the season. A good 80 metres. And you know what? Fair play to her for having the legs because Claudia McDonald was racing down after her there like a freight train. Yeah, and we know that Claudia has some gas to her. So Leanne did really well to keep going and get away. Kareen Grant was always in support though we know how speedy she is too Saracens now then 18 points clear but they'll want to stop Exeter from getting anything from this game at the moment I'm say perhaps black. undeservedly for what Off they've put black. in in this match here, the Devonians are currently leaving North London with no points but they've got the ball back and they will be hunting at the very least a try bonus point and they've got a penalty as a starting a point here and you'd imagine that they will be putting this one into the corner I think they might actually be tapping and going here I think they've now realized that their driving ball won't work so they're going to go on to keeping the ball alive and attack and you're right there with that one Zoe as Hope Rogers carries into contact I've uh, 
not giving you much warning here, but uh, at the next stoppage in play, I'm going to come to you for your player of the match. And we'll do a little bit of uh, a build-up, a little bit of a show. Talk to me about some of the players that have impressed you and then who you're going to be giving that award to at the end. We'll come to you at the next stoppage in play, though, as Exeter continue to probe, press, and Kobayashi now with the ball. And Exeter, 10 metres out from the line. They've got an opportunity here to go hunting that bonus point try. But it's been knocked on and Marley Packer comes back with the ball in her hands. And with that stoppage, Zoe, let's cue you in for your player of the match. Yeah, so obviously we've had some great standout performances of the typical Sophie Figuri and Marley Packer. But for me, the person that's really stood out the most is Poppy Cleo. Um We saw her in the first five minutes being a nuisance and then she continued to be a nuisance all game. Um, and she's played outstandingly, I thought, throughout and really carried yeah. that Sarries team forward. Sub, nine. Poppy Cleo then, nine. Zoe's player of the match. We'll be speaking to her on the final whistle. And a sub for Exeter Chiefs then. Olivia Ortiz coming on for Brooke Bradley. She's had, an had another really good game, Brooke Bradley, it has to be said. Go, please understudy to Flo Robinson for much of last season but has grown into that starting jersey for the Chiefs this year and Sarri's now low with uh, 90 seconds to go they've got the win but as we've been saying they don't Bind. want Exeter to get anything out of this one sit You can hear the applause, the penalty advantage coming, and Infante, well, hoofs it out to Gregson. She knows she's got the advantage, so she sort of hacks it through. Number one. Referee then penalising Hope Rogers there. And they'll clear up the field, Saracens, for sure. A scrum penalty for them, and uh, the scrum has been going backwards and forwards all day long. But Exeter have just fallen away a little bit at the end. That's Beth Blacklock boots that one into touch. Zoe, we can see the way this result is probably going to go now from a Sarri's perspective. One but right, Poppy Cleo, you've given your player of the match. How would you mark this as a game? You said they're always high scoring. You said they're always entertaining. It's it certainly lived up to it. It has lived up to it and it's been really yeah, exciting to see how um, the girls have been attacking against each other. Yeah, For me, the defences on both sides have been phenomenal at times and it's really had to make the other team really come alive and attack and it's really showcased what each team can do um i did mention standouts of a few forwards but also jess breach standing up and we spoke about her um pre-game and she's done everything we've said um and really shown what what um what player she's become recently and obviously let's not forget playing at fullback for saracens as well showing all of those different facets of her game nakina gondway now with the ball in her hands the clock is in the red on your screens it's uh, in the red now at the stadium and saracens then will get this one off the field surely their work is done they've got the victory over exeter chiefs that they needed but they're still at the moment happy to go through tackle. the phases the referee says tackle I don't think the, uh, the clock's gone into red on the ref's clock, I'll actually, and that's why they keep playing. Um, the girls are doing really well to keep this this ball with them. Um, they're making it slow. They're clearly running down the clock here. But a penalty Hold for it. Exeter, and they'll have a final opportunity. Holding on. Just as I said that they were doing well. <laughs> <laughs> It is credit, though, to that Chiefs pack. And there's, uh, there's some young players on there Last for Exeter play. now at, uh, in both prop positions. Abby Middlebrook, Lizzie Hanlon, local it's players growing with here, every match. I'm sure we might see Exeter try drive this again. So if, ha uh, if Saracens can get their hands back on the ball, and time is probably up now, so they can probably kick it out. So they can get out there quickly and steal the ball. Let's see what happens. Exeter look to drive this one, looking for that try bonus point. 
Will they have the final say to take something back to Devon with them? Well, they're building an Ortiz to Tessier to Deutsch. And Gregson wraps right, her up well. And Ortiz again to Miller Mills. And now... No! They're still going. Still probing. Sari's fans getting behind them. Kobayashi, big tackle on her. And Exeter to come back the other way. Looking for that bonus point score to Tosi. Now carries five no metres break. out on that five metre line. And uh, Rachel Johnson goes, powers through. Blacklock stops her, but the Chiefs are very, very close here. There is space, but Tessier is wrapped up well. Comes back inside. Advantage high. High tackle advantage. On the line, hands up. And now they're a metre out from the line. Still going, still looking NCR knocked on. No advantage. An tackle. accidental offside. So we'll come back and there is still life left in this match. On the Five line. metres out, Both looking feet. for the try. And uh, Lizzie Hanlon taps, goes, two metres out. Johnson goes, one metre out. Has she got it down, Rachel Johnson? No no Release hand. the call no from hand. the referee. There's still going to be life in it. Hands and face up, Black. And Exeter looking for the opportunity, looking for the try. Abby Middlebrook goes low and close, and Leach now goes, held up by Jess Breach. A couple of calls are high from the Exeter players, but the referee says play on. And Marley Packer then gives away a penalty there. It's going to be another penalty for the Chiefs, and it's... Uh, no, no, they look no. to take it quickly. Mark's got, to be on the five. got to be on the mark, though, says the referee. And uh, well, so we could have finished four minutes ago, but uh, you've got to give Exeter credit here, fighting till the very last moment. Yeah, it would have been nice if we finished four minutes ago. But yeah, they keep fighting, but Sarries are doing really well to keep no going. Hopefully they can, so Exeter don't get this bonus point. Johnson there was literally millimeters away from the line. Exeter attacking line, with the all they've got, and now they look to spin it wide. Tessier to Kobayashi, and they are going to finish with a late try. They do get that try bonus point, and that will be the final act of this game. Exeter Chiefs taking something back with them to Devon, and it's Kanako Kobayashi who crosses for the Devonians. Zoe, credit where it's due there. They continued powering away at the line, and a Unlike Saris did in that, that middle 20, when they saw the space, they flung it wide. Yeah, they did really well to keep going down the middle, draw the Saris defence in, and then swing it wide. Unfortunately for Saris, that means that to get the bonus point. Um, we have got the win, though, so that means we get the five points. We just probably didn't want them to get any points, but we'll see how this kick goes now as well. So it's 39-26, the conversion to come. Exeter won't be able to get themselves within seven but they have taken the try bonus point in Cantorna then. For her, she'll want to keep up that personal 100% record for the day. She can't quite drag it round. That's the final whistle. And 